So this one's made a film debut as well now. So it's <laughs> been seen on, on the big screen as well. You know, Frisha, when we're talking about behavioral change, that's like the key thing, right? Of course, we all say stakeholders need to change, governments need to change, policies need to get implemented. We all know that the 21 items plastic ban in India, while it has been announced by the prime minister of our country, very few states are able to actually implement the ban on the ground. So then that kind of ties back into behavioral change. There is nothing more powerful than the visual. When people see more people behave a certain way, more people will adopt that behavior. So today, I, when I started traveling with my metal bottle uh, eight years ago, no, very few people even understood the concept or want. And everybody would look at me and say, isn't it inconvenient? Like, why would you carry that weight around? I was like, my God, this weight takes off so much weight that I would be burdened by in my conscience if I didn't carry this bottle around. And today, when I go to an airport, I go to a railway station, I go to a bus stop, I go to a shopping mall, I go anywhere, I see more and more people carrying their own bottles, and it's a win. Because when people see more people behave a certain way, they adopt that change. So visual is everything. Storytelling is everything. What people will see, they will do. I, I, I would love it. Do you think you could ever put a number to maybe the number of plastic bottles you offsetted just by making this one micro Yeah, shift? I just shared it in my speech. Maybe you missed it. Over well, 70, I can't hear. Sorry. Over, over 70,000 bottles. 70,000 plastic bottles I actually do a very interesting in. visualization exercise. Our time's up, but I'm going to quickly do it before we end the session. Sure. So with, with children, I do this. What's the first item of plastic that you use in your day? Huh? Toothbrush. How many toothbrushes do you average in a year? Apart from the ones that you possibly use every time you go to a hotel and you pull out a new one. If you travel a lot and you don't carry your own toothbrush when you're traveling, you possibly do that. But let's omit that extra number. Let's go with the basic number of toothbrushes you use in your life in a year. Four? Four? Okay. Uh, how many, what do you expect your lifespan to be with the pollution? Let's reduce it by 20 years, but still, optimistically, how long do you think you'll live? Huh? 75 is your average lifespan? Okay. So what age did you start using toothbrushes at? Two, two and a half? Tell her, let's assume two. From the age of two to the age of 75, you used four toothbrushes a year. How many toothbrushes have you used in your life? Come on, somebody's got to be good at math because I'm not. <laughs> huh? 800 and? But it's much more. It's 800 and something. I've done this many times before. Yeah, it can't be 300. So just imagine. Just total 800 toothbrushes in one person's life, that's just one item of plastic that is never going to be recycled, that is going to take 800 years to break down, but it's never going to go anywhere. It's going to remain in the environment. And this is just one item of plastic that you're using every day in your life. That is the power of visualization. If we can draw our mental attention towards everything that we use in our life every day and ask of ourselves, ye kahan se aa raha hai? Ye kaise bana hai? Aur ye kahan jayega? Aur jab wo wahan pahunch jayega, to ye kaise natural environment ko aur mere health ko affect karega? If the answer is a positive answer, then use it. If the answer is in the negative, stop it. I've switched to bamboo toothbrushes. I'm actually now thinking of going back to Datun. <laughs> I know that you're in a very big hurry, but this is one last question before we let you go. Really, really quick one. When you travel as a family, um, I've also seen that you have shown your children the biggest theme park 
that exists on this planet, which is jungles, forests. How can you also maybe encourage everybody that is sitting over here and encourage them to make more eco-travel places like that and visit more eco-travel places like that and of course in a more sustainable way? So the most important, there are three aspects to that answer. One is that until and unless each and every one of us discovers our innate connection uh, to the natural world, we are not going to learn to protect the natural world. We have to understand that connection, that our health is connected to the health of the environment, that our existence is entirely dependent on the planetary health of, you know, the world that we live in. That's number one. Number two, and our children, the more we encourage them to engage with nature, interact with nature, spend time in nature, that understanding and that learning and knowledge will come automatically. You will have to do very little. We take CEOs into the forest and they don't only have mind, mind shift changes, their hearts change. Suddenly from being polluters, they become protectors. So that is the power of nature. The second aspect to that answer is how can the, one of the biggest drivers to achieving the sustainable development goals is engaging with local communities and empowering, empowering local communities. So it, it is not only an immersive cultural experience, but it's also an experience of empathy. It's something that encourages young people and young minds to dis discover that there are different kinds of people in our world who have different ways of living. So when I take them into the mountains, I ensure they are going and uh, you know, engaging and meeting the farmers, the agriculturists, the teachers. They're going to the local schools. They're meeting the local school children. They're seeing them sit down and eating their midday meal. They're seeing how hard it is for people to make a living. And they are discovering the inequity that we are surrounded by. And it propels them to ask of themselves, how can I change this? What can I do? What innovation, what solution, what sacrifice can I make, even as a child, to make a healthier contribution to my country and my world? Yeah, those are two important points. The third one, I mean, is, is not as important, but the third one really is that there is nothing more powerful than experience. The richest form of education is experience. And travel offers us that. Of course, we can travel even through books, but to physically meet people, engage with communities, and see life, and be evidenced of the reality. Like I remember a big switch happening in my mind when I did Ganga, the soul of India. I traveled from Gomuk to Ganga Sagar. And along the way, all I saw was ravines of plastic. And I was like, this has to change. How can I change it? I have to stop using plastic. So uh, I think that's the third and the most important aspect, yeah. Dia, thank you. I can go on forever. <laughs> I, but I can see your manager also <laughs> looking at me because I know you've been so kind enough to, and I know that we've overextended over here with you. And, and everyone's very hungry. And like <laughs> yeah, to have lunch. Also, <laughs> also that I'm going to quickly end with something that you quoted that I read very recently where you said that the longest and the toughest journey that you will ever make is one that you will make from your mind to your heart. And I think today you've inspired and you've touched everybody's hearts over here in our audience and you've really shown us the true heart of sustainability. Thank you. Thank yeah, you thank so much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sabas. <laughs> thank you, Mumbai Festival, for having me. All the best to all of us. I promise you there is nothing more part powerful than partnerships. I am right here waiting to support you and help you. Let's make the change that we have to together. Thank you.